Another mass shooting in a U.S. school left 21 dead, including 17 children. Last week, 80-year-old Salvador Ramos shocked the world when he opened fire in an elementary school in the city of Uvalde, Texas, and live-streamed his atrocities on social media. He was killed by police on the spot. So far this year, over 20 mass shootings have been recorded in schools, and a total of 7,700 people have died from gun violence in the United States. Yet. There is no sign the trend is bucking. How deep does the root cause go? How on earth can the issue be remedied? I'm pleased to be joined from London by visiting Professor Martin Jakes to Tsinghua University. He was a former senior fellow with uh, Cambridge University. I'm pleased to be joined from Hong Kong by Edward Lehman, Managing Director of Lehman, Lee and Xu LLP, a law firm. Gentlemen, welcome to The Point. So let's take a look at the past few years of trends um, in the shooting in the United States. We know uh, so far this year, 7,700 people have already died in the year 2021. 45,000 people died from gun violence. 2020, in the year 2020, 43,000. Uh, the year before that were almost 40,000 as well. And these are according to the data from Gun Violence Archive. As to school shootings, we have this uh, uh, network called uh, Education Week, which tracks school shooting incidents in the United States. And re they recorded 24 in the year 2018. 24 school shootings in the year 2019. For the year 2020, it's slightly less, only about 10. But then in the year 2021, there was a total of 34 shootings in U.S. schools. So, uh, Edward, let me go to you. Uh, how do you look at this persistent trend? It's not necessarily going up, not necessarily going uh, going worse, but the number has just been so extraordinarily high. 40,000 people uh, on average a year dying from gun violence in the United States. Yeah, it's it's a it's a tragedy uh, at, a, at a huge scale. I mean, when you look at, I think I was looking recently when we were looking up to, to research this, that I think the number one cause of, of children's death is is apparently school is shooting. I mean, so that that, that has moved up because that's such a, a demographic where there isn't a lot of death. So this is remarkable um, and it, it's shocking and it's American exceptionalism in, in what we don't want to be exceptional in, which is, uh, which is school shootings. I mean, I was looking at uh, just mass shootings. There's been one, I think, approximately for every day of this year, uh, somewhere like that. Before this, this Texas shooting, there was one in Buffalo. There was a, one out in, in California at a church. So, I mean, th this is a broad range of things, not just school shootings, but also mass shootings uh, that are occurring in the United States. And when you look at the reactions, for instance, a day after the shooting, U.S. Senator Ted Cruz was at a prayer vigil in the city. And when asked why a tragedy of this scale happened in the state, he said, this is the freest, most prosperous and safest country on earth. Really, um, Martin, let me go to, can this, can America brag itself about being the safest, safest place on earth? Um, and yet it seems for people like Ted Cruz, it's nothing is going to change his, his belief in this. Well, it's difficult listening to the statistics to believe that America is a very is a safe country. It seems to me that uh, uh, depending partly on where, where you live uh, and uh, uh, who you are, uh, this is a very unsafe country in lots of respects, uh, tragically so. Um, and I can't really see any resolution to this problem. I mean, the, the, the reasons for uh, uh, possession of guns in the United States is extremely old. I mean, it really goes back, uh, ultimately, I think, to the way in which the United States was originally uh, created. Uh, and in the re recent past, probably uh, dating back to the 1960s and desegregation, uh, then increasingly for the Republicans, uh, bearing arms became a major political and legal question. Uh, and so the situation now, I think, is a kind of logjam where, you know, this is in, in a way one of the ultimate polarization issues where the Republicans like uh, Ted Cruz or 
Trump and so on believe that, you know, guns are uh, the means to safety. You know, there, there's not a bad gun. There's, a, there's, a, there's either a bad man or a good, a good man holding a gun. And, and that's the way they look at it. So therefore, Trump's response to this situation has been to say, you know, guns are the, me uh, uh, the means to stay safe. They are a guarantee of security which is the opposite, by the way, not uh, to the experience in other countries. I mean, my own country's had mass shootings from time to time, very rare, but we've had them. And New Zealand and Australia and Canada and Norway have had these kind of shootings, but they've taken absolutely the opposite direction in response. They've, 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 restricted, they've restricted gun control, uh, gu gun use. Yeah, it seems that in the minds of uh, some people in the United States, the answer to the gun problem is more guns out there. And yet, being a mother, um, I'm, of course, extremely saddened to see the faces of the children who were killed in this um, absolutely unnecessary rampage. But yet, if you look at the killer, he is just turned, he just turned 18 years, literally, he was still a child too. How could a child be so cold-blooded against other children, against his own grammar. I mean, we have, we looked into some statistics, for instance, uh, according to the American Psychiatric Association, about three to five percent of Americans are sociopaths, psychopaths. Is that the problem? I mean, um, Edward, let me go to you first. And that another issue I, I pay attention is 30 percent of American families are single parent family, the highest in the world, one of the highest in the world. And Ramos, that child who killed the other people, seems also to come from a family where the mother and the father at least don't live together. So exactly what are the issues here? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, the mental health was the issue that was cited by Governor Greg Abbott uh, after a press conference after this had all occurred. If you look at it statistically, all countries have mental health issues. I mean, so you look at Japan, you look at Norway, you look, you look at, uh, at England all these other places, what's the variable? So the number's probably roughly the same with three to 5% in that range, I would imagine. Okay, so what's the, what is the variable? What is the issue that's different? Is that, uh, is the, is the prolific, prolific um, amount of guns within the United States? And so, um, I mean, America makes up only about 4% of the world's population, but it owns about 46% of the entire global stock of 857 million civilian firearms. So there are more, uh, many more guns in the United States than there are human beings in the United States. And so the ease with which someone can purchase this, if you look at this, this fellow, this perpetrator, uh, Ramos, like you said, I mean, he lived with his grandmother, he, he first shot his grandmother in, in the head. Uh, she somehow had managed to survive to raise the alarm. And uh, but still, there was not uh, there was not a uh, a moment in which they could have gotten together and stopped this from happening. So um, you know, uh, American civilians um, nearly they have owned nearly a hundred times more firearms as the U.S. military, and nearly four hundred times as many as law enforcement. So these are just average citizens. And every single time that there is a spike like this, where there are shootings, there's more guns that are purchased. So the American gun lobby, and by the way, I mean, Ted Cruz, which uh, we, we were just talking about a moment ago, he this weekend is at the NRA conference, uh, you know, talking to the National Rifle Association about the protection of, of gun, um, the, the ability to sell and own guns. So um, the, the, the biggest question really is, um, whichever way, you know, more guns, less guns, you have to be able to take action to solve the problem. And it seems that the United States is just unable to come to any consensus to do something meaningful. Um, Martin, what exactly is the problem? How big is the problem? Is the system that's not functioning? I mean, you have democracy in the United States, as they claim. You have the press that's free, independent, holding public power accountable. You have the president who's calling for action. It's very ironic because he is the president, but he's calling for action. I mean, action by whom? Exactly what is the problem? How deep does it go? Well, the problem is obviously very deep. I mean, I agree with what Edward said. I don't think that it's the primary problem here is mental health. Yeah, there's a serious mental health problem in the, uh, the United States. But, you know, you can say the same of quite a lot of countries, including my own. And there's the growing recognition of the importance of this. 
the problem in the United States is that it, a young kid who's feeling angry, who's feeling shut out of society, who's had a row, can reach for a gun and shoot. I mean, this is the problem because guns are, you know, ten a penny, as we would say in English uh, in the United States. They are very, very accessible. For an 18 year old, they can easily go and buy a gun. They, not just a gun, they can go and buy a semi automatic gun and as an assault weapon, which will shoot, you know, lots of people, as we see in these schools. You know, 20 is quite a regular kind of figure in these shootings. So uh, now the problem is uh, that. Uh, America is divided on this question, uh, divided between those who believe in the importance of the gun and the, the, the right to bear arms and the Second Amendment and another section of society, maybe roughly half, who believe the opposite. So there is a, there is a, 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 a paralysis and, a, and I don't see any solution to this in the near future. I mean, maybe it'll go on for a long, long time, this situation. It could even get worse. I mean, uh, uh, if you have uh, the return of something like the Trump presidency, then he'll obviously, uh, they'll, they'll obviously encourage uh, gun ownership. But the problem also is historical. And I don't think we should in any way underestimate this, that America grew up uh, by the use of arms. I mean, how did how 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 were the Native Americans defeated by the gun? Yeah. So basically, when there is a problem, Martin, let me stay with you. When there is a problem that's so dire that needs to be addressed, the American political system, the way it is now, is unable to carry out any fundamental reform that's necessary. I mean, as old this is the problem is, as big the problem is, the way it is now, the political system, it is now, it's unable to just address this issue. Yeah, well, of course, this is not just limited to the question of gun gun control. I mean, of course, a, a, a range of issues. The only issue in America which unites Americans at the moment is the attitude towards China. But otherwise, uh, Americans are absolutely divided on most issues. I mean, look what happened to uh, Biden's economic uh, program. It's not got anywhere. Uh, nothing's happened. No, nothing will happen. That, you know. So the, the, pro the problem is very, very deep in American society, which is the country is profoundly divided. Edward, um, how long is it going to take till this uh, uh, issue can really be addressed and start to see some kind of resolution? Well, the, the, again, Ted Cruz uh, received four hundred forty-two thousand dollars from the uh, from the National Rifle Association. They're a strong gun lobby. There has been reform. It was nineteen ninety-four to two thousand four against AR fifteen uh, uh, type rifles. Didn't work out for them. Uh, it, that lapsed in two thousand four. Wasn't really a, a reduction in shootings at that point in time. So I think the future lies with what what Americans can do at the, at the ballot box to be able to change their uh, elected officials in order to, to change the laws and policies and regulations to get around the Second Amendment and give them back to the state's rights, which, uh, which is what they've done with abortion. But those same people who have done it with abortion or want to do it with abortion won't do it for gun rights because of the Second Amendment. So we're in this kind of catch-22 uh, cycle that I'm not sure we're going to get out in the near future. So it doesn't bode well for that uh, part of the American society. Very tricky issue. Many thanks to my guests, uh, Martin Jakes joining us from London and uh, Edward Lehman joining us from Hong Kong. Thank you very much.